I was born our mentor Harriet Ross to enslaved parents in Dorchester County, Maryland. It was a hurt and pain being born into this condition of racial servitude and surviving this system of chattel slavery. Overseers didn't think slaves could do their jobs properly without being whipped. There were times I took no less than five lashings before breakfast time, still carrying no scars. When I was no more than 11 or 12 years of age, I was sent to the dry goods store for supplies. Came across a slave who had left the fields without permission. His overseer demanded I help restrain the runaway. When I refused, the overseer threw a two pound weight striking me in the head. To this day, still carrying these seizures and headaches, but they gave way to vision, to divine premonitions where I consulted with God. I trusted that he would keep me safe, and he did. When I escaped from slavery in 1849, crossing from Maryland into Pennsylvania on my first journey of freedom, when I found that I had crossed that line, I looked at my hands to, to see if I was the same person. Hmm. There was such glory over everything. The sun came like gold through the trees and over the fields, and I felt like I was in heaven. But I was a stranger in a strange land. My father, my mother, my sisters, my brothers, and friends were in Maryland. But I was free, and they should be free. I felt the calling to help those in my former condition, so I went back. I was a conductor for the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the track, and I never lost a passenger. And it wasn't no easy way making this, but it had to be done. Freed over 700 slaves. My journey into the land of slavery put me at tremendous risk, and I used a variety of tricks to avoid detection. Once, I disguised myself with a bonnet and carried two live chickens to give the appearance of running errands. Found myself walking toward a former owner in Dorchester County. So I yanked the strings holding the bird's legs and that agitation allowed me to pass right on by. Another time, I recognized a fellow train passenger as another former master. I snatched nearby newspaper and pretended to read, and it passed right on by me. I also carried a revolver and was not afraid to use it. The gun afforded some protection from the ever-present slave catchers and their dogs. However, it also came in handy if someone tried to turn back on the journey, since that would threaten the safety of the remaining group. On one journey, a man insisted he was going back to the plantation. When morale got low, I pointed that gun at his head and said, you go on or die. Several days later, he was with the group when we entered the United Province of Canada. I sang a version of Go Down Moses to signal my refugees along the path to freedom. I would change the tempo to indicate that it was either safe or too dangerous to proceed. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell all Pharaoh to let my people go. <laughs> like other underground railroad conductors, I use various methods to signal based on my own needs. That war that wound up freeing my people is over. I'm now working for my gender to promote the cause of women's suffrage, the right to vote. A white woman once asked me whether I believe women ought to have the right to vote. And I gave this reply. I suffered enough to believe it. I began attending meetings of suffragist organizations and working alongside women such as Susan B. Anthony and Emily Howland, 
travel to New York, Boston, and Washington, D.C. to speak out in favor of women's voting rights. When I speak, I describe my actions during and after the Civil War and use the sacrifices of countless women throughout modern history as evidence of women's equality to men. I'll continue on this journey until we women reach the promised land of enfranchisement as well. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell all pharaohs to let all women vote.